We marveled the serenity of the forest and craved the shroud of its silence. Welcome, everybody. This is a game I've actually been looking forward to. Very, very long time ago. It's actually on one of the playlists. Uh, I played the demo of this game, Road Warden. And now the full release has dropped, meaning, yes, I intend to play it. Let's see. Achievement show, make sure everything's good. All right. Start a new game. Everyone knows to stay away from the wilderness. Most people would never risk a lonely journey. Road wardens not only accept the struggle, they embrace it. They deliver messages, assist merchants, burn human corpses, and if possible, get rid of the beast and highwaymen. They live on the road, die young, or retire early. It's a dangerous job, but a respectable one, and it pays well. I leave the safety of the city walls. Please select the difficulty mode. This choice can't, and bolded, be altered later on. Casual for those focused on the story, no time limit. There's a 40 day limit. Some quests are more forgiving. Standard 40 day limit. Returning Rogue Wardens, 30 day, and increased nighttime damage. I think we're just gonna start with standard, just to spice it up a little bit. The wall is still standing. There are no wolves around, no stench of blood. Good signs. This should be the place you're looking for. There were supposed to be... You were supposed to meet with a group of soldiers, but you hear no voices, no sounds of labor. The cage is ajar, but the camp isn't safe. You may keep away the goblins and peddlers, but not beast folk or trolls. And the night is near. Your palfrey breathes heavily. It has been a long day. Well... Well, why rush in? Let's just sneak in. Sneaky snack. Take care of yourself. If you're hurt or exhausted, some actions won't be available to you. The weaker you are, the higher chance you'll die in combat. If you have your boots hit the ground, and the pain of the long ride finally catches up with you. You stretch out, bringing your back legs comfort. All you want now is a table, a piece of chair, a nice mug of beer, and some warm stew. With any luck, your axe won't be needed here. Now you approach the gate slowly. If it's a military camp, it doesn't look the part. Plenty of wasted space, the fire pit is cold. Two people are sitting at the table, tired and disheartened. They're looking in different directions, paying no attention to one another. One of them is holding the cup. After a moment, you notice the quiet humming. You recognize the melody of a light-hearted drinking song from the city harbor. I still don't trust them. Need to look around. People inside the camp didn't even notice the clatter of hooves. Short dry grasses barely cover the arid soil of this valley, but you're maybe a minute away from the edges of the sparse woods, which get denser as they climb up the hills. At best, the trail has a few more years before getting overgrown for good. Hard to believe it's the only route north. Well, I don't got much of a choice. Let's enter. It takes them a few breaths to glance in, in your direction. The first person greets you with a wave of his hand. There are bags under his eyes. His beard is messy. Despite his simple shirt, he's wearing durable, decent boots. A mace, a head covered with iron, hangs at his side, but he doesn't reach for it. Take a, take a look at the second soul. So, beardy man for mace. Just like you, she's wearing a gambitson, but hers is a bit loose, as, she had, as if she had took it off a corpse. Her head is shaven, as if she's protecting herself from flesh-eating bugs. Her eyes are weary, yet kind. She smiles. Considering the squad that was sent here half a year ago, these two surely look the part. Though there should be more of them. Eight, you believe. Let them speak. It's nice to see an unarmed traveler in this godforsaken chino. Makes me just a tiny bit hopeful. The bearded man's voice is strong, yet timid. He'll be staying the night with us, I guess. Oi, soldiers. He and I, adds the armed woman. Her moment switches from half asleep to relaxed. We do our best to keep the camp safe, but if you want to take the first watch, it would be a huge help. Travelers ought to help each other, wouldn't you say? 
You think for a moment. To fully rest, you need a good sleep. Ah, fuck it, sure. Fantastic! She rubs her hands together. I don't remember the last time I got more than half a night's sleep. The hours before midnight should be the calmest. Just wake us up if anything happens. The man flashes you a huge smile. It's easy to wake us up. Just yell! As he drinks from his mug. I asked them about their lieutenant. You wonder how to phrase your question. Whenever you meet new people, you can influence how they perceive you by selecting one of the attitudes. Friendly, supportive, and cordial. Playful, use a joke or a witty comment. Distance, hide your emotions. Intimidating, hidden a threat. Vulnerable, be sad, tired, afraid, or hopeless. Let's be supportive. Friendly. No need to get them to believe that I could kill them in their sleep. I was hoping to meet with your lieutenant. Can we talk for a bit? The woman lets out a loud sigh, dusts off her garments, and steps toward you. She pays little attention to the sword at her side. We most definitely can, you and I. Though, holding this rank is still somewhat new to me. Are you a messenger? Did you lose your mount? She observes you with curiosity. Or are you looking for help? I'm your new rogue warden. My horse is waiting outside. Really? The so soldier in the shirt leans forward. That explains how you got here in one piece all by yourself. Better bring your beast here, adds the lieutenant. We have no A, but I bet it dreams of dropping its saddle. A long pause. I'm Tulia, by the way. That's not what a Tulia sounds like, but I'm rolling with it. She reaches out her hand. It may be a trap. I gesture for her to stop, pretending to be embarrassed. I should wash myself first, but you can call me Lethal. Oh my god, alright. Fucking Dune reference here? We're gonna call myself one of my book characters. A character who's a ranger, an exile, someone who's a decent person but keeps himself distance. Galen. If I can spell. Lieutenant stands with her hand out, but then raises her arms with an awkward smile. Of course, of course. Just keep your horse away from the tents. She steps away. We don't need to smell its dung. We well, should also prepare for the night. The soldier in the start shirt start also rises to his feet. Well, we've no tent to spare, but I mean, you'll have to use a blanket or something. That's fine. You walk through the gate. Your mount looks around and snorts anxiously. Not many humans could ride a horse. It's not only taller than you, but also bulky, as heavy it is strong. You can get in the saddle with a single breath, but most people wouldn't know where to be even begin. From every side, it's a wall of flesh. Horses were brought to the Dragon's Woods from the Conquest in the South. They can trot for a long time, but will not run some of the local monsters. Your palfrey needs you to survive, but without it, you too would be lost. It's my only companion here. I wanted to feel at ease. It takes a few steps toward you, scolding you with another snort. You scratch the bottom of its neck with strength and confidence, just the way it likes it. Humans see useful animals and even pets as monsters in disguise. Getting emotionally attached to them is believed to lead humans to their doom. But you know that horses need companionship. I speak it, speak to it gently, and lead it into the camp. You end up next to the fire pit, removing the saddle from what makes the horse nicker with relief. Take a couple of minutes to examine its back, just in case. While the riding equipment is not that heavy for such a strong animal, with enough time it starts to chafe. You wish it had something better to eat than the shabby grass. You should look for an inn. Yeah, but we need to unpack first. You haven't brought that many things, and you lost one of the sacks while fleeing the Crimson Corp Eaters. Ugh! Worst of all, you have no rope left, but maybe the soldiers can share one. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't cost more than a dragon bone. Aside from the travel set, you own a few valuable possessions essential to your trade. A fighter, mage, or a scholar. Tell me more. As a fighter, you'll have an easier time in physical challenges thanks to your superior equipment and hidden bonuses during dice rolls. You'll be physically more capable than other classes, what opens unique opportunities during some social interactions. It's the best comp class for RPG beginners. The fighter's weakness is their reliance on physical strength. 
Your special abilities won't be available if your vitality dro points drop to zero. The mage uses Numa, a versatile but limited pool of e energy points that can be that can be spent to cast a few humble spells. Magic won't protect you better than the sharp axe, but as a mage, you'll be able to heal faster while resting. Detect magic in a mysterious area, distract a beast with a simple trick, and find a common tongue with other magic users. Using the mage's powers, you freely will result in having no Numa left when you need it most. Scholar will know more about the world's mysteries than you, helping you take advantage of some unusual situations. Your characters will impress the locals with its knowledge, and you'll be able to re read the sparse written clues without anyone's assistance. Scholars struggle with combat more than other classes, but with enough carefulness and exploration, you'll gain access to all chemical mixtures that will allow you to escape from many dangerous situations. <sighs> I think I'll pick the mage. <clears throat> you unpack and inspect your belongings. Your water skin isn't pierced. The spare clothes are still here, just in case. Th thank you. You take a look at your wooden bowl and mug. Your cape, tinder boxes, bandages, food, rations, knife. Nothing special or too cumbersome. From time to time, your routine helps you avoid mistakes, but this doesn't make it any more exciting. Taking hits will damage your armor, and you can fix it at various settlements. Got it. Alright, well, I've got two food rations. They consist of dried meat, crackers, nuts, seeds, fruit, water, which can spoil slowly and don't require additional cooking. So I can just eat them right there. And a pouch of coins. Alright, give me uno momento. Sorry about that, had to get a drink. Pouch of coins. City artisans make coins by cutting dragon bones into slices. Interesting. That's a different way than the usual, like, gold. They are valued by merchants, though rarely used in the countryside. Makes sense, because it's probably a barter system. A gambinson, a padded defensive jacket, of linen filled with rags. It's the cheapest type of armor, yet surprisingly effective. As a result, very common. Magical amulets and now magic is unreliable, so you spent a sack of coins to collect a couple of en en enchanting amulets. They'll help you focus your Numa in ways you don't quite understand. And of course, your standard travel set and a simple battle axe. Alright, let's save. Oh, that's when I played it? That makes sense. Okay, let's delete that save. That's my demo save, but we're not going to be using that anytime soon. Alright. Let's return. Let's return to the soldiers. They're at the table again, observing your beast and chatting between themselves. Your stomach growls at the sight of them eating out of wooden bowls. One more bowl was put at a previously unused end of the table. You can sit down on a tree log. Alright, I thank them for the meal, but I don't want to eat with them. I sit down and ask Tulia what she can tell me about this area. Keeping your stomach full will make you stronger. Starvation won't allow you to restore vitality while resting. You can find your supplies in the inventory. Okay, so we have vitality, which is your health. Your nourishment, which is basically how full you are. And then your armor, which allows you to probably to blunt vitality attacks. That makes sense. She's focused and chooses her words carefully. She looks away only when she gathers her thoughts. I'm afraid I can tell you less than I would like to, and less than I should. She nods towards the other soldier. As you can see, there's not a lot of us left. At the beginning of the summer, there were eight of us, including our previous lieutenant. Five are dead. One is run away in tears. We're also strangers in this land. Or, <coughs> I'm sorry. We're also strangers in this land, adds her companion. Any piece of information may help me do my job. The man leans forward. His legs shake nervously. 
He sounds like a kid asking a bard to sing one more story, tell a joke, or do a magic trick. Whatever it takes to escape from boredom, his untrimmed beard hides a much younger face than you originally thought. What do the officials tell you? I expect not that much. No soul governs these lands. I share what I consider to be relevant. You tell the soldiers how little guidance you've received, since the area is far too away from Hoveland to keep it under control. You were warned that it's untamed and unknown. Who knows how many villages, bandits, or monsters may be found in these unmapped hills and forests. From time to time, new people come here to look for boundless opportunities. Most of them never return. Do they turn into walking corpses, or find what they're looking for? No, so it could tell me, so I was looking for your guidance. The lieutenant drinks from her cups and crosses her legs, ankle on knee. Seeing her chair makes you doubt she'll ever find a comfortable position. Where should we start? Alright, what about the peninsula? What do I need to know? And I'm guessing, okay, so this is the time. What about the peninsula? I'll tell you what I know, and what, and you'll be the judge, says the lieutenant. How long did it take to get here from the city? On decent palfrey? I guess it would be three, four days. When you confirm, she continues. From here, you can reach the coast in about a day, as long as you don't make any stops. Do you know the situation? Why no ships can get here? You nod. Sea route allows Halliman Hovelin officials to keep in touch with their coastal villages. Collect taxes, remove the soldiers, collect lumber, deliver tools, but maintaining order on a wild coast such as this one is like filling an ocean depth with coins. Because of the rocks, you can hardly stop a ship five miles from the shore, and boats can't get much closer. She nods. I don't know much about fishing, but there's not that many people living by the shore, and I don't crave to stay in touch with the city folk. As she pauses, her companion carries on. No soul from the north ever came to the camp, but when we travel to the roadside inn, Pelt of the north, they're happy to trade, and to play dice. Well, why not stay at one of the settlements? The man clears his throat. I mean, you know, we're to guard this road. This camp is our post, and well... Turns towards Tulia. She lowers her voice. Don't take it the wrong way, Galen. But are you a devout soul? Like most city folk, I believe the folk should unite their strength to overcome the threats of the dark. Everyone will be judged for both good and evil deeds. For many years have supported the monastery, but that that does its best to advance mankind's spiritual growth, artistry, herbalism, and magical research. Okay. I'm from a small village. For me, the freedom of sh of shell, numa, and soul are the main virtues in life. My community is unique and independent to its members of the fellowship. I have a strong connection to nature and spirits and follow this path of my ancestors, some believe. Well, there's no evidence of the rite's existence and all the mystical tales are explained by magic, so no, I'm not. The man nods. I've heard that most war road wards drift away from the church. It don't matter to me. Neither to neither of us, I think. That's the lieutenant, peeping at her companion. I just wanted to make sure I won't step on any touchy subject. You won't. Go ahead. People out here are disgusting. Or disqui- are not disgusting. Disquieting. Every few words, she taps the table with her finger. Their tradition- Their traditions won't help them negotiate with the officials. Here. She starts to draw lines with her index finger, as if she's pointing to an invisible map. The peninsula is connected with roads, like a big circle. In the northwest, you'll find a weird village at a vogue. It's not exactly pagan, I don't think so. It even has a priest who claims to be an Aramite. You nod. She means a fellowship. My dear crazy shit. Her companion chips in. Hey, you, they use the dead to cut down trees and dig in soil. Once I saw it, I begged to, ne to never return there. Sounds like necromancers. Interesting. I feel like I'm going to have to start writing shit down. Or at least keep a note. You've heard of such tales as this one since you were a child. If an isolated settlement manages to survive without a city's influence, its customs and traditions grow more and more alien. Every generation learns how to adapt to dangerous conditions they have to deal with, and the rustic pig pig yeah, 
Rustic pagan traditions muddy the rhythm of faith. The United Church often warns its members about the crazy druids, necromancers, and blood mages, the bringers of doom, the traitors to humankind. Yeah, I was right. Alright. And did you speak to these guys? You can see why we were not eager to go there if we could avoid it. The lieutenant chuckles. Maybe you'll be more welcoming to a road. Maybe they'll be more welcoming to a road ward. These roads are dangerous. With little to no help, people need your help. Or with little no shelter ash. Potato, potato. The man in the shirt turns a bit and points a finger to the northwest. If you're heading to the undead village, you'll get it in. You'll get to an inn first, and soon. Julia nods. Pelt of the north is a safe place. You can talk with the innkeeper of the gods. Ask about the road. And the east? She stares across, off across the camp. Hard to tell. We went there only once. There are hills, forests, rivers. We saw a tunnel sculpted in leaves and branches, but we didn't enter it. Wilderness all around. Any monsters? We saw all sorts of beasts. The man starts to count on his fingers. Goblins, trains, cats large and small, runners, hallows, wolves, spiked boars, morphinitas, griffins. But we managed to stay away. Some could catch up with most mounts. Tulia glances at her companion. Though a palfrey should be fine. The trees are all so tall that any... That the flying creatures keep to the coast and mountains. There's not many, that many humans around. And the animals are busy fighting amongst themselves. They fight for more food than territory. No, the soldier cracks his knuckles. Don't provoke them and ride fast. Just count on luck. Alright. Is that some information about the peninsula? Holy fuck. I'm afraid we can't do more for you. Alright, and um, maybe we can get a rope. You're in luck. She heads towards one, one of the crates and moves aside a large linen sack, revealing a rope. She brings it back and nonchalantly sits down on her chair. Take it. I was planning to leave it behind. Alright. It's a fine rope. A regular rope made of hemp fibers. Alright. I'll take it. Alright, what happened to the original squad? Man shrugs. Bandits happen. And monsters. A strong band, though. His companion chips in. When we got to the peninsula in spring, we saw some people living in this camp. The lieutenant decided to avoid it and look for an end. We had to travel through the night for a bit. <laughs> the bearded soldier scoffs, crosses his arm, but she carries on. If he had decided otherwise, we would have all died that day. The innkeeper explained that the camp is a trap. That the armed ones pretend to be soldiers, stay there at night, Lose everything you have. Sounds like slave hunters. Are you slave hunters? Tulia sighs. Very much so. They killed some, took others away. Who knows where. They were letting the northerners go, hoping to avoid their wrath. It kind of worked, adds the soldier. We asked them for help, but they refused. We had to clear the entire camp on our own. That's why three of our people died. Don't exaggerate, it's not like the lieutenant didn't make a mistake. He wanted to get rid of them and take over the camp, but... Oh. Don't exaggerate, it's not like the lieutenant didn't make a mistake. He wanted to get rid of them and take over the camp, but we didn't know of our enemy well enough. We were outnumbered, and they had an ice mage among them. She looks at you. At least we cleared the roads, saved lives. And you mentioned monsters. Nothing that would surprise you. Those who were, of us who had survived the skirmish were young, too ex inexperienced to spend a summer in this place without a good leader, and they didn't trust me. One of them got caught by a trent. Another one ignored my orders to perform so, some sort of ritual hunt, so a werebear tore to pieces. The last one tried to act tough, didn't tell us they had, he had cut his hand while cleaning his gambits in. She lets out a nasty chuckle. <laughs> We had to cut it off. He was so ashamed that he decided to walk north, find a new life, disappear. 
idiot. What a colorful journey. The man tries to drink from his mug, but it's empty. Alright, well, silence. Tulia seems defeated. Alright, and how do you become a lieutenant? That's not much of a story, honestly. She looks at her hand, which is currently rolling a mug over the table. In the city, there's a strict order of... Watch, I call it. She exchanged looks with her companion, but he can't help her. Well, leadership succession, I guess. All of them chiefs select commanders. Those select lieutenants. And those put their soldiers in prior order of priority. If a lieutenant dies, they get replaced by the next soldier in line. And you were a successor? Ah, uh, not exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> when we fought the bandits, our lieutenant was hit by a slingshot. His boyfriend jumped to help him, but failed to protect either of them from a spell. It was like a ball of ice that hung above them and exploded, piercing their heads, completely avoiding their shield. Really unpleasant. She pauses. And you were the next in line, then. Basically, yeah. She says without enthusiasm. I didn't plan to become a leader, though. I'll get demoted once we return to the city. I prefer to follow anyway. Alright. And what was your mission? She looks into, her eye, into your eyes. You know, the usual. Making the roads safe. Keep people alive. I explained that it may be important for me to know what they have tried to accomplish. I can't tell you. I really can't really tell you. Let's just say it would be nice to have a reliable outpost somewhere nearby. A place where you can always find a group of fighters willing to protect you in the name of the law. She tilts her head back. Now, if you have any other questions. Anything I should know about this camp? The story is brief. Some merchants built the camp to have an extra stop for mules and donkeys just between the inn and the southern villages. There's plenty of gla grass here and a pond nearby. When the peninsula grew more dangerous, the camp stood abandoned, from time to time serving as a shelter for travelers. The bandits came here in spring, further paralyzing the exchange of information between the northern and the southern settlements. Since these highwaymen are no more, the situation may reverse. Time that will tell. You can sleep here whenever you want, the man concludes their tale. Though, don't expect to wake up without pain in your back. If you were me, where would you go next? The soldier answers quickly. To the inn, of course, he grabs his empty mug. One northwest from here. If you can't afford the room, the main hall is free of charge. The locals ra rarely gather there. Northern Row is much more traveled, mentions Tulia. But the hunters will tell you about this and that, and you'll have a chance to introduce yourself. The innkeeper can listen, and know as many souls. Alright, any, any tips for a first impression? She smirks. Avoid cheap jokes. Stick to trade, don't waste his time. Show him that you could be relied upon. Alright. I'll keep a mental note of that. Don't don't joke. Alright, the previous row warden? Tully takes a deep breath. Aren't you a bit late for the rescue mission? We haven't heard from him for almost half a year. The soldiers speak for a bit between themselves, trying to get their story straight. They confirm he had stopped by their camp a few times, but stopped showing up at all in early summer. The bearded soldier starts to scratch the table with the tip of his knife, without looking at you. I don't remember his voice. Always busy, joining in things to take care of. He would sit somewhere, sharpen his sword, fix his loud mail, clean clothes, write notes on that wax tablet of his. Yep, and leave it done. Unlike us, Hysteria never gets bored. Tulia lets out a joyless chuckle. He's secretive, but some of us locals speak about him warmly. Maybe he just doesn't like us. Sounds like you're not sure if he's dead or not. If anyone knows, they won't tell us. Maybe someone is keeping him in a basement. Or <clears throat> if anyone knows, they won't tell us. Maybe someone is keeping him in a basement? The man carves with passion. We haven't seen him or Hisarian. Something ate them, I bet. The officials have hired you, right? They don't expect him to return. Richer road wardens off to use four-legged man-eating Saurons as their mount. They have to be tamed and trained since they since they're hatchlings, but unlike horses, they can easily defend themselves from any monsters. Always your palfrey is fast and reliable and won't suddenly sink its teeth into an innocent passerby. 
you know what he was looking for? Maybe he left you a message? Neither of us had any insight into his dealing. I'm going to stop with the accents just for right now, says Tulia. My predecessors left me no clues. We also took a look at Asterian stuff. Wait! She raised an her open palm. I almost forgot. She stands up and heads to a nearby tent. He has kids in a village near Holloman. I was planning to take all his things there. A pouch, a second sphere, a decent bow, some potions. Quite a treasure. She glances at you. But I would prefer much to bring them the truth about their father. So you want me to find out what happened to them in exchange for their stuff. Here's the catch. She dusts off the hilt of her sword. We've hired a messenger to ask the commander for further orders. Since she hasn't returned and you know nothing about her, she either ran away or something happened to her. She sighs with resignation. We are meant to stay here until fall. What do you think? Come see us. Tell us what you've learned about the man. And we'll get back to Holloman together. So I have to go see the commander... You think about your real mission. You were planning to return to Holloman in early fall anyway. If he's alive, I don't think he's going to be happy about me taking away all of his possessions. Alright. Oh, we have quest. True, but he's considered dead, and I doubt he'll spare you anything. And who knows, you may just find his shell lying on the roadside tomorrow. He wears a mail, uses a spear mostly, maybe about five feet tall, but stout. Long red beard, short face, pale... Short hair, pale face. Rarely smiles. She glances at her companion, but after he adds nothing, she sits down and stretches out her legs. So find out what happened to him. Dead, alive, left. Just let me know. It's getting late. We should prepare for that. So that's my that's my goal, is to find out what happened. I agree. Tully sighs with relief. And you may do better than Asterion did. Stay vigilant. She winks at you, shattering the mask of a soldier. Thank you for your help. Oh, and then I can look at the archive. Oh, staying tidy. Oh, there's a tidy. You don't stand out from a crowd. You won't get much cleaner without a proper bath. You go to the barrel and splash some face underwater. What makes you even more aware of how much you need a bath after after the night? It'll only get worse. Your horse is already napping. Still, too anxious to lay down. I prepare for my watch. The soldier in the shirt is eager to guide you. Just observe the area. There's plenty of griffins around, though they won't try to jump over the palisade. Probably. Better watch out for the apes. They climb up and carry out any food they can find. And there's this one really wild weir leak that keeps getting that keeps smelling the wall, though it's never tried to get in. He points at a gate. The lieutenant and I will block the entrances. They're quite heavy, so if anyone comes here looking for shelter, better call us to help you out. And if the someone is being chased by wolves or anything, better to throw them the rope instead. He scratches his head. If it gets cold, feel free to make a fire. And the best place is on the watchtower. You may want to put on a blanket there or something. Watchtower. He means this. This thing right here. Gives you a long puzzled look. Oh, here. He points to a pile of crates. Just climb up on the tallest one. You'll have a great view of the northern side. The more dangerous side. And also, I know you're tired after all that riding. He points to the tent on the other side of the camp. I can handle a couple hours of sleeping on the ground. If you wish, go there after me and rest. Just this once. At least I have a pallet inside. Thanks. <coughs> Here we go. I'm gonna save. All right, quick save. <coughs> oh boy, this is our first night. You put your blanket on the tallest crate and sit down. The night is warm. The sporadic summer breeze brings gentle refreshment. From time to time, your back aches. You force yourself to keep your eyes open. The light of the moon helps you focus on the tall grass. For most of the time, you spot smaller critters and birds, but there are exceptions. At one point, the three horned deer is trying to get trying to challenge one another before they before they clash their antlers. A two legged dragling dragonling appears, leading its much smaller offspring. The furry beasts try to intimidate the predators with roars and aggressive head movements. After a few moments, both sides walk away, slowly, not willing to risk the fight. 
or to admit their defeat. I don't let them distract me and keep looking around. You hear the death screams of distant prey and the mating calls of monkeys. Runners are chasing a gray hare. A group of musk oxen lazily chew the grass, preparing themselves to sleep. A dust fox is running together with a lynx, making playful screeches. Thankfully, you never have to intervene. You just sit there, watching the not-so-distant forest, trying to outlast your sleepiness. You can only guess how much time has passed. Once you feel you've had enough, you climb down, go to a tent, and wake the bearded man with just a couple of words. You confirm that nothing important has happened. I gather my things and squeeze in the tent. I use my bag as a pillow, put my blanket on the pallet, and cover myself with my cloak. Sleeping in a tent is not the stuff of dreams. I don't like that noise. But it's much welcome rest. The pallet keeps the soil, cold soil away anyway. The moonlight saves you from the outside world, of, from the eerie gloom. You listen to your own breath and find a comfortable position. Your job starts tomorrow. And focus on the real goal of my journey. Okay, so this is this is my actual goal. This is what I have to complete within 40 days. The Merchant Guild wants you to take control of this realm, or wants to take control of this realm. Your warning duties are secondary, first and foremost. You need to explore the peninsula, learn about the territories, resources, and threats. Get to know the locals, and if you can, convince them to consider negotiations with Holloman officials and traders. Could the tribes resist the soldiers or be a threat to the priests of the United Church? Are there any forbidden practices that need to be eradicated, such as blood magic, necromancy, robbery, or slavery? At least I have time. 40 days to be exact. I need to be as thorough as I can. Once you finish your reconnaissance, you should speak with Tulia and return to Holloman. There, you'll report back to your employers and get your reward. In the meantime, you have your own goal to pursue. Okay, so this is my um, all. This is my uh, personal goal. Gather extra coins, so I can retire early. Hmm. Find a new life. I have a difficult past, and I want it to be forgotten. Your half-sleep senses are catching the sounds of the wild forest. Your instincts keep you alert and anxious. Through the pleasant, humid, late summer air event even evens it out slowly. You're thinking about your goal, but you need to gather your strength. All I can do now is rest. Sleeping in a tent. You can spend the night in a borrowed tent. It's something special, but will protect you from the wind and rain. And the ground won't be painfully hard nor cold. Let's do it. take a look at your amulets. For most people, they would be nothing more than trash. But you wouldn't sell them for a pouch of dragon bones. You use them to shape Numa to your will. With these little mementos, the few spells you're familiar with are far more reliable. Who knows? Maybe there's already some power held in them. You look at the old, through cl though clean bandages that remember dusts of herbal balms and wounds. You can put them on your hurting muscles, bruises, and scratches, then hum an old song about time, which heals all wounds. Or kills us too soon and let us bother us with problem, our problems. After a few hours or so, the linen will warm up, confirming it's at its job. This tent may not be much, but your spell would make you feel as good as new, though you lose some energy. Okay, so this is my Numa, which allows me to cast spells. I only have five. Yeah, it's better to keep my soul stronger than my shell. 